Hey everybody, it's Katherine. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. You may know that I work in tech sales full time as my day job. Surprisingly for me, I have seen a lot of you express interest in knowing more about what sales is, what tech sales is, the tech industry, how I got into all of this, what my day to day is like. Let it be known that anything I say in this video is not on behalf of the company I work for or anyone in sales. I'm just gonna try to tell it like it is without sugarcoating anything because I think that's the most helpful way to learn about what sales is. So I'm going to spend the rest of the video answering your most commonly asked questions from you all I could not make this video without first answering how I got into tech sales. I've seen that question a bunch and I sort of stumbled into it is how I would say. It happened basically, I had never envisioned tech sales as a potential career path for me. I had pretty much zero exposure to it until my last year at USC, one of my tour guide friends had graduated and started working at the same company I now work for in tech sales through their sort of sales academy program. He came back to campus for, you know, the recruitment fair and basically said anyone that was a tour guide he thought would be a good fit. And at that point in my job hunt process, I was open to anything and any endorsement from a friend, I was willing to bet on that role being a good job. I applied to the job online, met the recruiter at an event they had the night before the career fair met with them again at their career fair, did like a 20 minute in-person interview while they were on campus. And then there was sort of like a super day. So they invited all the sort of like final applicants to the headquarters. We were there for two days and we sort of did workshops, team challenges, presentations, of course, interviews. And it was actually a very fun process. And then about a week after that super day, I got the call that I was hired. So that's my little journey. Why did I choose sales over marketing or other types of business roles? Well, um, first off, I would say sales and marketing roles oftentimes get lumped together because they are kind of two sides of the same coin. That being said, I did two marketing, I use the term loosely, but marketing internships during the summers at college and it was basically just social media. Like it was just creating social media content for the brands and it's super ironic, but for some reason I did not gel, enjoy, feel fulfilled by, feel challenged by that type of work um, as like an entry level marketing role. And so for me, you know, as much as I would love to be a marketing manager or, you know, scale up the marketing chain that way, I just could not commit to a job where I was doing social media full time as my entry level marketing role. I will say tech sales is a very, very common entry point into the tech industry as a whole and into non-technical roles. If you don't have an engineering degree, it's really hard to get into marketing at a lot of tech companies. Like a lot of times the Googles of the world don't even have out of college positions in marketing. So I had seen tons of seniors graduate and then go into tech sales and then from there pivot into whatever like marketing, business strategy, ops, or sales role they wanted to go into. So I saw it as like a really good jumping off point to start off in sales. How did I know I wanted to go into sales? I didn't at all. No conceptual even idea of it. Like it wasn't even on my radar. To say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. Being completely honest there, like I never took a sales class, I never did a sales competition, never networked with anybody in sales, like it was never on my roadmap. I didn't even scratch the surface of what sales was until I met the recruiter at the career fair. Being completely real. How big of a role has your degree played in your job? Hiring wise, application of skills, etc. Tangentially, what degrees do your coworkers have? You know, is it mostly business or is it a mix? Without reading too much into this question, I think a lot of people worry that they're not in the right degree and they're not in the right major to go into sales, which should not be a concern. Like in terms of who I work with, a lot of them were in sales programs and they were taking sales classes 90% of the time and they did sales competitions. And then there's another half of people I work with who were agriculture majors or political science or calm or theater. 
And I would not say that the sales majors outperform the non-sales majors. Like it doesn't necessarily correlate that way. I don't think it made a huge impact in the hiring process, whether or not I was a business major. It's more so just about the skills you learn in college that you can apply to sales. So I was a tour guide. I also took a communications class that taught me about public speaking. And that all translates into sales because you're giving a lot of presentations to customers. Some very basic Excel skills can be helpful. I took one data science class in the business school that helped me there. Finance actually is important because you wanna be able to know your customers financial statements and what they're working on. But I could have learned that all on the job. Like it wasn't mission critical that I was a business major to go into sales. So I would generally say that sales is not major exclusive. It's not like a software engineering job where you pretty much have to be a comp sci major out of college to get a job in software engineering. Is it true that you have to be an Ivy League grad attractive, play D1 sports, etc., to get into sales. This question is incredibly valid because I know exactly where it comes from. I still struggle to this day openly saying I'm in tech sales because there is such a stigma and such a perception to sales. Sales has this flavor to it, you know? If sales does feel very white, it feels very male, very hetero, very upper middle class, very facey elite, like, and that's not out of nowhere. It's not out of nowhere. No, you do not have to be an Ivy League grad. In fact, the opposite. I work with a number of people that do not have college degrees. I don't have an Ivy League degree. I'm trying to think of people in my level at my department that went to Ivy Leagues, and I don't think there are actually any, so. Don't feel threatened by that. You do not have to be a D1 athlete or have ever worked out in your life to be in sales. Those do not have an impact, but yes, you will see people like that in sales. So just laying it out there. This piggybacks right into the question I got, the many questions I get about the negative perception of sales, um, the stigma, which I talked about in my last video on sales. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it below, but like I wholeheartedly have such an issue with the stigma of sales because it's the reason I never applied to any sales internships, never networked with anybody in sales, never even thought about it until my last career fair of college. Like at USC, it was basically spit upon to, you know, go into sales. Everybody in the business school was driving towards investment banking or consulting, and there was never a third avenue of sales. Despite the fact that now when I look back at my graduating class, so, so many people are in tech sales doing the same thing I'm doing. Like they don't promote it, but somehow people still land in it because it is a really good fit. It's a high paying, good job out of college, but nobody talks about it like that because it gets this bad rap. The kind of like sleazy, bro culture, you know, fast talking, like archetype that we have in our heads of a salesperson that certainly exists out there. But as soon as I got to my company and I started with my hiring class of 25 people, like more than anything, everyone was genuinely driven, ambitious, motivated, intelligent, like creative. It didn't feel like everybody was there just to be Leonardo DiCaprio and Wolf of Wall Street. I wouldn't be in sales if that stereotype held true for every organization. Like there's definitely culture fit to consider when you apply to jobs. I think that I have a really good culture fit at my company, but I've heard of some other companies having more of a bro culture. There are pockets of that, but I wish it didn't exist because we'd get such a better application pool of people if that stereotype disintegrated. What sort of personality traits are better suited to this job? I definitely wanna talk about this. How do you match up the skills you need in sales to what you have today and what you're good at today? Some of the key traits I see with sales are number one, ambitious or goal oriented. Sales is quite literally structured so that you have a quota or a goal in front of you and it is your job to hit that. So it's very performance based. If you're someone who likes to work towards a goal and hit it and check off that box and feel that sense of accomplishment, sales is for you. You also have to be organized. You are kind of your own project manager in this job. There is nobody telling you what to do every day. It's up to you how you approach the job, how you communicate to your customers, how you build a deal, how you close that deal. Like, yes, there are frameworks in place and certain things you have to abide by, but when I wake up in the morning, like 
it's really up to me how much I put my foot on the gas. So you wanna be a self-starter, someone that's organized and can, you know, stay on top of deadlines and make your own goalposts. So if you enjoy kind of having ownership over your projects and not just, you know, having a manager telling you what to do. My manager doesn't tell me what to do. She's just a sounding board for when I need help. Um, I can go to her and she'll, you know, help me work through the deal, whatever it may be. You also have to be someone that enjoys communication. You know, you enjoy writing, packaging your ideas. I always liked marketing because I liked the idea of putting a brand's message together and you get to do that in sales because you're putting your own brand's message out to your customers on a one-to-one -one level. So it's not like you're marketing to just an abyss. In sales, you get to communicate directly to a person and have an individual impact on their view of your product and your company. So communication, organization, goal-oriented, those are all what clicked with me and hold true. There was a secondary part to this question that asked about being an extrovert versus an introvert as a salesperson and how that impacts your job. I work with a huge mix of extroverts and introverts. I personally am an extrovert, so I can't speak to the introvert experience in sales, but some of the best salespeople I know are introverts because they're not gonna ramble to the customer for 20 minutes. They're going to be extremely good listeners, really hear what the customer is saying, and be able to, you know, be a person of few words, like really pithy with your delivery because you've been listening so well. Like you're someone that processes things differently from an extrovert. So if you're an introvert and you're worried about that getting in the way, don't whatsoever. Like it really has its own advantages too. What is something you dislike about working in sales? I'm just gonna come out and say it. There's a diversity problem in sales a very rampant one. I do feel like the people I work with on a day-to-day -day basis look very much like me. I don't like working in that environment. I don't wanna work with people of similar backgrounds. I think at the sort of entry level, there has been more queer, POC, first-generation, underserved community representation. It's getting better, but by no means is it at an okay level. Like it is not good when you look at the upper levels, how white, how male, affluent, singular it gets. If I could change one thing that I dislike, that would be what I would change. What happens if you and your colleagues don't hit quota and how is it addressed? While there's decent job security in recessions with sales, your job security in the role isn't 100% guaranteed like it would be in a marketing role or like a software engineering role. That is something to consider where 100% of your pay isn't guaranteed every month. You have this quota, it's your job to hit it. Um, when you don't consistently and you're really, really, really far, far away from the quota consistently, that's where it gets into sort of like nervous territory and you may have conversations with your manager or you may not, like it really just depends. Um, but it won't be out of the blue, like they'll have a conversation with you and they'll do their best to get you back on track if that's possible. Is it realistically attainable to hit quota every month? Do you ever feel like you might not? We don't really do monthly quotas, we just track quarterly and annually. I certainly have had quarters where I have not hit my quota. I am not perfect. It is very, very difficult to hit your quota every single quarter um, for your whole career. It just doesn't happen. Like that's not the X, like yes, they're expecting you to hit 100%, but in the lived everyday experience with my coworkers, like do they always hit 100% every single quarter? No. So it's not that level of pressure. Just to calm any nerves out there if you're worried about the quota thing like the fire under my own ass to hit my quota every quarter is much larger than the fire the external fire under my ass from you know leadership and managers um they are always very empathetic when shit happens because let's face it sales it's like you don't have 100 percent control over your customers especially now like things can flip on their head so easily and it does feel like half preparation half luck with any deal cycle. So like managers are very understanding because they've been through it. They know that it's, you do everything possible that you can, but sometimes it doesn't work out. So you're not gonna get the guillotine if you don't hit your quota one quarter, two quarters. There is some leniency. Do you think your work does some kind of greater good? If so, how? Huge 
question. Huge question. Thank you for asking it. Um, on a fundamental level, do I close my laptop every day and feel like I made the world a better place? No, absolutely not. I will acknowledge sales, you know, is built on capitalism. The idea behind it is that I'm selling people products to make my company money, who then pays me a small, small, small amount of that in reward for making them money. Like the system of it, I don't love. I don't love just being, you know, a part of corporate America on a political level. I have a little bit of dissonance there with sales. But there is this other part of me that looks at it and says, wow, when I close deals and I make my company money, that allows my company to fund tens of thousands of people's salaries. So in that way, it's really cool to me to know that like when I do well, it affects the company's financials, it affects the company's stock price, and all of those things help the employees because they, they benefit from the stock price, they benefit from their salary. So there is some positive impact of what I do there, and then there is positive impact with customers where they'll come back and say, wow, here's the impact of your products in our everyday business. Here's what we were able to do for our customers because of you. And like actually allowing businesses to transform digitally and serve you better so that you have a better experience every day because we've all had really, really poor experiences with companies via their app screwing up or their website screwing up or the customer support being faulty. Like we all know what that experience is like. I feel good that I'm having an impact on companies that way. But like by and large, I don't think my coworkers are worried about the greater good as horrible as that sounds. I just wanted to be honest about it, that I know that I'm not working at a nonprofit and I know that I'm not doing that sales affords me a salary where I can take those means and apply them towards causes that I care deeply about. Like I'm not directly working towards a greater good, but I can funnel the salary I get for my job to support organizations I care about. So it's, it gives me hope that this question was asked because we should be thinking about the economic, cultural, environmental, systemic impact of what we do every single day. And it's circling in my head. It's I am not absent of those thoughts um, and I know I can do better. I wanted to talk more about the tech industry as a whole, not just sales, and then about my career plans because I got a couple questions about just individually what I'm going to be doing, which is fine, I can talk about it. I'm gonna save those for a part two. So if you have any more questions in those areas, leave them down below. But in the meantime, if you're not subscribed, give it a shot, maybe hit that red button. Like this video if you learned something or appreciated how almost too candid I was. And I will see you all next time. Thanks so much for watching and Cather out.